Hey guys, I'm the Depressed Engineer, and today I want to talk about how to become an electrical engineer. I, as per usual, I haven't really prepared for this video at all, so we're just going to kind of wing it and see what happens and see what comes out of my face. Uh, I just got my new gamer chair, OP seat. It's a lot more comfortable than the fake vinyl chair that I've been using the whole time, and it's been leaving pieces of leather everywhere. Also made sure to wear my black polo so it looks like I'm fused with the bed sheets and pretty much everything else on the bottom of the screen, so. Um, I basically just look like a floating head now. In any case, <laughs> I digress. Um, I, I, since it has been a while since I made a video last time, uh, I kind of just want to go over just a few things that I've been doing since then. So I'm actually starting my new company or trying to at least, at the very least. Um, it's called Solid Ideas. So currently I have Solid Ideas LLC, which is a 3D printing service company. And I've been kind of working with some of my coworkers on getting them things that they wanted printed off of like Thingiverse and other websites that have STL files on them. The next project I'm working on was actually more of my main project is the Solid Ideas Foundation. So the Solid Ideas Foundation is going to be a nonprofit organization, which is still 3D printing, but we're going to be using 3D printers to make prosthetics for people who need them. So generally speaking, a lot of prosthetics cost a lot of money. I think it's about 185 people get amputations per year. I'm trying to remember if that's, I think that might be in the US alone. I have to double check on that again. But um, all this stuff I'm gonna be making a website for, it'll probably be solidideasfoundation.org. Um, I'll probably create that website once I get everything approved through the IRS because I have to do all this paperwork in order to make it a, a, a nonprofit on a little to make it a nonprofit on a federal level. It's currently in the state of Arizona a nonprofit, but um, in order to get tax exemption status and tax deductions and whatever, I have to go through the IRS. So uh, I'm currently working on that, currently working on redesigning a logo for it because the current image I have right now is really just a stock image. So I don't really want to run into legal issues there. So um, it's not that I haven't been doing anything in my spare time since my last video. It's just I've been really caught up in a lot of different things and uh, that's been one of my biggest projects right now is just trying to start my own business and it's a little challenging but I'm trying to get through it and do what I can to make it work out so okay anyways uh, now that I've wasted enough time let's talk about how to become an engineer so obviously there's the typical go to college right you go to college for four years four and a half years whatever uh, you might have some internships or co-ops. They were called co-ops at my school. So whatever, it's the same thing. Um, so the internships and the co-ops are definitely gonna get you the experience that you want. And then obviously school is gonna give you the knowledge that you want. And I'm pretty sure if you talk to any electrical engineer out in the field, I shouldn't say any, but about 80% of the engineers are going to talk to who are probably about my age and have been working out in the field. You probably don't use a whole lot of the education that you get from school. The internships, I do use a little bit of that. But to be honest, a lot of my internships were, hey, here's a spreadsheet, fill it out. And then I had two internships where I actually worked in a lab and I actually did things. But it was still mostly like plug in the AC to DC adapter and then write out the test results and a report. And it was really just basic stuff that pretty much a high school graduate could do. So when I was doing my internships, I I knew they were bad. <laughs> like I knew I was going into them and I really hated being there. And I was like, there's no way this is what an engineering job is supposed to be like. Because exactly what I'm doing right now it's sitting at a desk, doing a whole lot of paperwork, every once in a while getting your hands-on experience. But for the most part, it's just really boring stuff that a high school graduate can do. But of course, being the person that I was back then, those internships, I didn't see them as something like, that would be, this is gonna be my future. It's like, oh, they're doing this because I'm an intern. 
Uh, you know, clearly I don't know enough things, so they're not going to give me any technical tasks. Well, fast forward to me being 28 years old in 2019, and all I pretty much do is sit at a desk contemplating on an escape plan, <laughs> trying to uh, come up with a business idea, things like that. Uh, uh, I think the most technical thing I've ever had to do there is connect some cables together and, you know, check things with a DMM. That's basically it. I'm trying to think of a good way to say how exactly somebody becomes an engineer, because there's a lot of different uh, engineering levels, and there's actually a lot of older engineers at my current job who didn't even get engineering degrees. They were just technicians for long enough, and they were eventually like, Hey, you know the system very well, so you're just going to be an engineer now. So, nowadays it's not going to work so well. You, you pretty much have to get your bachelor's degree at the very least. And then your master's degree will help you get into more of a research field, and the PhD will help you teach, and you can do lead projects on research on campus or something like that. Uh, I never really cared to get that far. I thought about getting a master's degree, but after seeing people who have master's degree make the same amount of money that I do and pretty much do the same work that I do, uh, I just don't really think it's worth it. Now, if you want to get your PhD, then obviously go get your master's, because that's the only way to do it. But for engineering, all you really need is your bachelor's. But again, um, if you get a bachelor's degree, you're going to get a very basic job. Um, so in any case, a lot of the stuff I learned in school just isn't used anymore. If anything, I would encourage people who do want to go into engineering to try to do a little bit more research on their own just to see what it's like out there. My experience is obviously going to be a little bit different than somebody else's. Some engineers get out there and they actually do engineering, but I'll be honest with you, it's very rare. And I know I've said this in my other videos, but it's just... It's the truth. Like, you're probably going to go out there and you're just going to get a whole lot of paperwork and not a whole lot of technical experience. And eventually, at some point, if you want to make more money, you're going to have to be a manager, which is going to require you to uh, work on public speaking. Obviously, I'm not very good at public speaking and I'm still trying to work on that more and more each day. Um, but I'm human, <laughs> so I can only do so much. But, um,. I'd say if you have a lot of downtime at your job, uh, public speaking is a good one. Uh, f even just reading books, like The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, and The Four Hour Work Week, and As a Man Thinketh, like all these kind of books try to change your mindset. So when I was first trying to become an engineer, I was a very shy person, still kind of am, but getting a little better with that. Um, always focused on being right about everything and that's a big issue with a lot of engineers is that they want to be right about everything because obviously if you fuck something up in engineering then it's going to fuck up your product and something might go wrong so you try to be right all the time the problem is we're human beings so we can't always be right all the time so it's very important to be open-minded i always thought of myself as a very open-minded person but Looking back at it now, I probably could have been a little more open to ideas, but, uh, you know, another trait of being an engineer is being fairly stubborn, so I was a pretty stubborn person. I was also super not happy in college, but uh, there was a multitude of reasons for that, just because there were, I had really bad teachers, I had a, a really broken relationship with my ex-girlfriend, yada yada yada, things like that. In any case... Uh, hopefully you're not going through those issues, but it is college, so you never know. Um, but yeah, try to expand your mind to things not just engineering related. Honestly, in my research that I've done, the closest you're probably going to really get to being an engineer is going through data science, which is just working with data systems and servers, things like that, uh, making databases, all that stuff. And... In some of the research I've done, you know, what's the best transi transition for an engineer? Because obviously I'm at a point where I probably don't even want to do an engineering job anymore. I don't find it challenging. I don't find it exciting. There's nothing fun about it. It pays well and it has good benefits, but I, whenever I think of myself 
trying to work there for the next 40 years, I kind of want to vomit. So I don't think I want to stay in engineering for very long. Um, another job that works very well is either something in finances, because there's not a lot of number involves, because there are a lot of numbers involved, can't speak today. I haven't done one of these videos in a while, so I've uh, gotten a little rusty. Uh, the other job would be a business intelligence analyst. Now, a business intelligence analyst is basically somebody who works for a business and they analyze all the data that they can. So that includes looking at competitors, uh, sales, uh, how much they're worth, seeing how much your company is making, how you can try to improve that. There's a lot of making charts and graphs and you know visually representing all these numbers that you find. So there's it's a pretty good transition for an engineer just because it's actually really technical and hardcore data related. You'll probably be doing a lot of data mining and sometimes that might even include using some Python script to data mine some of that information. So uh, those are the two big ones I can think of off the top of my head. There's probably some other ones. So data science and business intelligence analyst, some, some companies just call it business analyst. Uh, pretty much any job that ends with analyst is something that's gonna be uh, very good for an engineer just because engineers are very analytical. Um, we actually took a personality test at work and pretty much every single person who was an engineer scored higher on the analytical side of the brain. So go figure. Uh, in any case, um, to be honest with you, it's not super hard to be an electrical engineer. I pretty much go into work and if I'm low on work, I'll just read a book. And if I have a lot of work, it's really not hard to get it done, to be honest with you. A lot of the stuff I do is, again, filling out spreadsheets using a lot of databases that were created in like 1980 and then trying to make it work with, you know, Windows 10, it's kind of stuff like that. Uh, I make a lot of phone calls, go to meetings. I speak with sales representatives from other companies like Smartronics, uh, places that where we actually buy our equipment from. I have to speak with those people and make sure that we're getting what we're supposed to be getting. So that's, that's another reason why Public speaking so good is because because you can't just sit behind a desk all day and just hope that's it Like you're gonna have to go talk to other people at some point and If you ever want to start your own business, you really gotta start talking to other people and working on your public speaking so It's just something you're gonna have to learn and they don't really do a very good job of it in school And it's really dumb and I hated it. <laughs> so I really wish there would have been a class like you know, understanding how to deal with emotions and speaking with other people, just public speaking in general. I mean, we did have a speech class in high school, but it just really was not ideal. It's like, yeah, go stay in front of the classroom and read stuff. Okay, I there's my speech, done. And everyone goes, oh, good job. You, you read your paper that you wrote five minutes ago. So... Yeah, if there was actually something that was just like, hey, how about you stand in front of here and just improvise something or I don't know. I don't even know how what a good way to do it is, but public speaking is such an important thing that uh, I, I feel like a lot of people have kind of lost touch with it. I don't want, I don't want to be that guy. It's like, oh, the social media is ruining everything, but in a way it kind of is. But. In any case, um, when you go to school for electrical engineering, there's a lot of stuff you have to learn, but try not to sweat it too much just because when you actually get in the work world, no one's really going to expect you to do all that stuff that you learned in school. A lot of times a program does that for you or there's software that does it for you. And it's, it's not just electrical engineering, obviously. There's a lot of other engineering disciplines that have fallen in that category now. I think software engineering would probably be the closest thing to actually doing things where you'll actually be programming stuff and doing whatever software engineers do because that stuff still needs to be done by humans but uh, yeah I mean from my experience I, I honestly can't recommend electrical engineering for somebody I mean unless you really feel like it's the thing you want to get into I mean go for it I'm not gonna stop you obviously but from me, I just can't suggest electrical engineering for somebody. It's just, I've been out of school for 
four years? Yeah, I know how to count. Almost five years now. Yeah, I graduated in December of 2013, and then January 20... Holy crap. Okay, I guess I've been out of school for five years. Jesus. Um, and pretty much all I've ever experienced is the same crap. It gets old really fast. Uh, especially... Here's a big part of it. I've worked a lot of defense contracting jobs. I would not recommend defense contracting jobs. They pay well and they have decent benefits, but you are going to be doing the same thing for the rest of your life if you do a contracting or a defense contracting job. And a lot of that's just because the government's involved. So you're going to be filling out the same forms, the same paperwork, talking to the same people. Well, actually, you might not be talking to the same people because if there's anything I've learned from government jobs is the turnout is really high. So one day your manager will be Nick, and the next day, next day your manager is Kevin, and the next day it's Bob. It's like people change job roles so quickly there that you might actually just not be talking to the same person. But it'll be the same conversation. Don't trust me on that. So you'll be filling out the same forms, talking to the same customer, doing the same things over and over and over. You'll pretty much just be a part of the rat race and a cog, you know, in the machine, really. So, do not do defense contra contract. I did a video on that already. It's not fun, and it's horrible, and I, I honestly think the only way you can get through a defense contracting job is if you take antidepressants, because um, I'm actually kind of at that point now where I'll probably make a video about that, but I, I've been taking some anti-anxiety medication, and it's just, this job's been terrible for my health and my mental health, so. It's not good. Wouldn't recommend it. Now, if you actually get a job with a company that actually cares about engineering, that's a different story. But I worked for a university, and the big thing with universities is supposed to be research and engineering. I did absolutely no engineering there. Like, sometimes sometimes something would fall apart, and I'd just, you know, unplug it and then plug it back in, and it would work just fine. That's about as much engineering experience as I had there. Uh, again, as I said in my other videos, you're better off just either starting your own business, or doing your own engineering projects at home, which I kind of hate that because it's like, I don't have an electronics lab in my home. And stuff like that costs a lot of money. Unless you, you're just working on like toys or something. If you want to just tinker with toys and Arduino boards, that stuff's pretty cheap. But if you want like an oscilloscope, oscilloscopes are fairly expensive unless you find a cheap used one. Uh, DMMs are pretty fairly cheap unless you get like a really high-end one those can get a little expensive so it's not totally impossible but it's like hey I have an engineering job why am I not doing engineering at my job why do I have to do engineering at home so that, those are your pretty much your options start your own business or do that or I guess rot in a cube like everybody else does because that's kind of the point I'm at right now but I'm again I'm trying to start solid ideas and hopefully that works out and I'll be able to help a lot of people with my nonprofit. And if you want to go check that out, I have a website. It's called solidideasllc.com. I'll put the link in the description. You can go check it out. Currently have a GoFundMe going on right now. Uh, it's actually been going on for a while and there's only probably been about $30 in donations. So please feel free to check out that GoFundMe and donate whatever you can. If it's just a dollar or two dollars, it really helps out because that's the uh, fundraiser I'm using right now to kind of start up Solid Ideas LLC and Solid Ideas Foundation because obviously nothing's free, so I have to buy the equipment that I need. I, I have a 3D, actually I have two 3D printers at the moment, um, but if we want to get into high-end prosthetics that work really well, I want to use Probably something more along the lines of a resin 3D printer, which can cost like $1,300 or $1,500. Uh, some of them cost like $2,000, but uh, each dollar that you put in there is definitely going to help out my ideas and try to create the company that actually gives a crap about helping people and helping them using engineering knowledge and medical knowledge as well. So. It's really for a good cause, but I obviously don't blame you if you don't trust me with your money or whatever. So you, I'm not saying you have to go. I can't force anybody to go to the GoFundMe and donate money, but again, it would be really helpful if you could do that. So feel free to check it out and try to get some more info. Check out the website. It's still trying to make it look a little bit better, but I think it's reached a pretty good point so far. So. Uh, and even write down in the comments or message me and leave some feedback on what you think uh, looks bad or good. So 
All right, Al. I think it's time to end this video here. I pretty much just rambled on for long enough. So thank you again, guys, for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.